Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're listening to the Ash Bryan Radio Show on KHCS 1220 and 98.1 FM. So every week, for people that have never listened to this show, this is the Ash Bryan Radio Show. And we've been now on for over almost five and a half years. We started... <laughs> oh, that was funny. Uh, a little quirk by our owner. So uh, anyway, we have been going on for five and a half years. Each week, we try to bring on an entrepreneur that will teach us something about business, or sometimes we'll have somebody come on that has a, a business background or can provide information to our users. That's what we do. We try to teach every week. And everybody always will ask us, if you've never listened to the show, why is the show called Ask Brian, since my name is not Brian. I hate to break the news to everybody, but it's not. And why do you use the word letter E when you're spelling Brian? Because most people spell Brian B-R-I-I-N or B-R-Y-A-N, but very few people spell Brian with an E, except for that famous group of Irish people at the pub, the O'Briens. O'Brien's a very popular name in Ireland, which also has an E in it, Ireland, I R. I uh, e. That is so funny. <laughs> and it's quite a stretch, I would add, as well. <laughs> you have to be able to extrapolate. <laughs> and extrapolate has an E in it as well. So Now, that and, one was fancy. That was woo, just flat out fancy. <laughs> and we also have a fancy, and, um, our engineer, which begins with an E, also has her first name begins with an E. What is that? Emily. Woo! Woo! Wow, lots of ease. Woo-hoo! But that's not Emily, why. We have to congratulate. We have to congr- take a moment to congratulate Emily for being completely legit. She's graduated from intern to employee. Yay! I think that's we a little far, whoop, whoop. far-fetched for what Whoa. you got, but okay. Uh, Yay! I mean, I don't know what legitimate <laughs> means, but uh, we'll leg- see. Hey, she's too well, legit. Well, not you, Peter. <laughs> Ooh. Well, legitimate has a lot of consequences, so we'll see what that really means. Um, maybe now you're going to... Hopefully too legit to quit. Hey. Maybe, ah. maybe, maybe, maybe legit to start paying taxes. All right, so Mr. Patrick, our former en- engineer. Hello. He's Hello. actually an ex-engineer, so that's E-X. So that's an E and X and an engineer. So he's double E right there. I'm still, an, I'm still an engineer, just not for this you're show. You're an ex-engineer of the S. Bryan show. Fair. Fair okay. Um, yes. So, without any further ado, a d i e u, and we're not going to get into that yet. <laughs> okay. Why? <laughs> why are we spelling Brian with an e? Well, there's a number of words that have to do with, like, kind of like the theme of S. Brian that start with an e. Uh, one of them was well, engineer, and also another one was Emily because Emily is the engineer, and the engineer helps run the show. Heyo. Hey. I guess. A. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, others we have is uh, education because we're a very uh, we are a very educated people and we like to educate other people. Well, I don't know about our education, but the purpose of educating others, yes. Yes, indeed, indeed. Uh, outside of that, we have uh, we have experts because everybody that appears on Ask Brian is an expert in their own field. field? What are you an expert in? Talking, communicating, and engineering. Woo! <laughs> That's a pretty far stretch, but okay. Oh. It's got me so far. <laughs> <laughs> but we do have a qualification to be an expert on Ask Brian. What are those qualifications? qualifications? We used to know those in the beginning. Do you remember? Uh, it was like, I think it was like you have to have at least 10,000 hours. And how do we calculate that out? Oh, you're giving Working me... every single day of your life. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and Not never close. having a day off. 40, <laughs> much. 40 hours a week, 50 weeks a year because you get two weeks for vacation sick. That's 2,000 times right. five years. Right. That's 10,000 hours. That's what we qualify to be an expert. You know, you know, Brian, I'm not much of a, uh, of a math numbers guy, so that, this is why I rely on you to well, help me Well, but you have fingers. One, two, three. Can't you add? Look at the fingers. Ma- <laughs> math just gives me headaches. Well, let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Was not the best. Na- well, and, and I give you headaches. This is also fair. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is also very true. <laughs> uh, also our, we, our guest has a migraine and that also has an E at the end too <laughs> go ahead I don't even think she's still here I'm seriously <laughs> who would stick oh, no. <laughs> Tracy who would stick around <laughs> I'm screaming expletives <laughs> uh, that's e. a new one <laughs> well, yeah, but that's why 
Just don't provide examples of those. But that's why we, you need to have tenacity to be a guest on our show. <laughs> no, tenacity does not start with an E. I love your But you FCC do need tenacity. <laughs> you, you like that one, Trace? I like that one. <laughs> so what are the oh, E's? Oh, boy. The, well, the rest of the E's. I was getting there. I was getting there, mister. The rest of the E's were definitely, uh, let's see, enthusiasm and a little bit of excitement. Well, uh, what? <laughs> did we catch you there? Did we catch you? No, there? I'm trying to. I'm speaking, trying to get technical issues no. resolved. <laughs> but I um, want to so say my favorite one because no yeah. one said it yet. Well, first of all, she doesn't know this, but uh, one of the E's, very very big E we have, is we're like grease lightning. So Tracy, you and I can do that at the same time. Take it from there, Trace. Electrifying. Electrifying. <laughs> Well, it wasn't quite at the Ooh. same time, but whatever. <laughs> um, One, whoa. two, three. Electrify. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, okay, I'll say I it as many times as we need to, but we should probably move on. <laughs> I don't know that we got all the E's. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We have uh, experts. Uh, experience, because everybody's very experienced on the Ask Brian Show of all their experts and our hosts and hostesses. Well... I think you got them all. We have education. Mm-hmm. We have electrifying, mm-hmm. like grease lightning. Mm-hmm. We have enthusiasm. And excitement. And excitement. Uh, we have, um, we already went through education, experts, experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and engineer. Emily, uh, Emily, 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 Emily. Well, if we got rid of that last one, yeah, I guess <laughs> <it's good. laughs> I, th- I think we're good. Well, I think we are, and I know that some enough. people want to listen to our show Fair. and find out some information. Some. So without any further ado, how do you spell that? A-D-I-E-U. And why do I like it? Because every single letter in there is a vowel except for the D. And it has an E in it. That too. And by the way, if we really <laughs> wanted to do the E's, it shouldn't be called Ask Brian with one E because my name is Peter and I have two. Oh, so. my God. Can we please move <laughs> on? <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, help us. Uh, Save geez, us. We it's, have not, it's not help such us. It's an amazing guest. It's okay, bye, Patty. Thanks to share. <laughs> Later. No one cares about the E's anymore. <laughs> Whoa. Well, there aren't any, any E's. There I are... didn't say ever. I just oh, said anymore. Yeah. She I, okay. did say anymore. Well, we are waiting for our guest, and her name is Wanda, and there are no E's in Wanda, but there are two A's. Uh-uh. So, uh-uh. Uh-uh. I'm like Wanda, like Madonna. You just say Wanda. Oh, I'm just <laughs> looking at the profile. Sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> so, and by the way, you do have an E in your, in your program that you have. You own something called K-E-T-C-H. Is that correct? And what is that? Yeah, catch words. Catch words. And catch has the E in it, so we may have to start using that oh on Ask Brian Show. Enough already. What is catch? Enough already. What is catch? <laughs> What is catch words? Um, no, what is catch so, so essentially it's a texting platform that allows audiences to text for information and get that in their email inbox instantaneously. And so what we typically do is work with, um, work, work with experts that are, they're usually service-minded, ex- uh, impact-driven. They really love teaching, and we help them to connect with their audiences better by offering the audiences some really cool information and using a really simple interface like texting to give it to them. And, uh, yeah, it's just uh, – it, it really adds to the audience experience, but the biggest thing is when experts love to share their expertise, like they really share from their heart um, – after a while, they get a little bit of, of a fatigue if they don't know that their speaking engagement or their podcast, radio, TV interview, like, was it really worth it, right? We kind of hope that people listened, and we hope that people were, were uh, inspired, but there's really no way to measure whether that particular engagement went well, unless you have a good call to action. And so that's what we do. We finally, like, inspire these people to know, did they do a good job or not, so that they can continue to do a good job and uh, continue to help change people's lives and businesses. 
Well, before we get into uh, how, how it, wh what the product is, let's get a little bit more into how it started. So how did you start Catch? Oh, it's an interesting story because it was not Catch in the beginning. Um, if I can take you back to 2007, <laughs> that's, that's literally when I conceptualized it. So um, I, I was running my own business uh, at that point, but I was at a large medical conference, and we've all been to some sort of big exhibit hall or whatever. And um, I had a, a tiny little booth, but as the, uh, this conference had like 35,000 attendees. So I want, to, want you to kind of imagine uh, that. But basically, after the conference is over, then all of the materials, like all of those brochures and articles and such that were at the exhibit booths, they were getting thrown into um, the center of the exhibit center. It was actually McCormick Place in Chicago, if anybody knows it. It's huge. And, um, and I saw this pile, this human climbable pile of paper that was being thrown out. And I was like, uh... This is a problem because, one, any of us as companies, I mean, I used to work for a pharmaceutical company, so we would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on printing educational material, right? But even as small businesses, we spend money now in a post-COVID world and also pre-COVID, right? We spend money to print up materials and, and, and such, but we don't really know if anybody picked it up or did it wind up in the garbage. And this was like a physical representation of all the stuff that was winding up in the garbage. And, um, and I was like, this is, this is a problem. One, we print up all these materials. We don't know if they're picked up or they go in the garbage. Two, if any of us were actually attendees, we hate carrying around that paper, right? Sucks. Uh, usually winds up in the garbage, even if we liked the piece of information. And, um, and three, there was really no way to measure. Like, if I had three brochures, I had no idea whether somebody – opened one versus the other or read one versus the other. So I got nerdy. I put my nerd hat on. And um, over two years of thinking through this problem, in 2009, we launched something called EcoFiles because it was intended to be an eco-friendly solution to these files of information. Um, and so that's kind of how it started. But when I, I was typically working with uh, large companies at the time, and when I was presenting it to them, they were like, wow, this is really interesting. But unfortunately, only kids text. This is back in 2009. <laughs> so I was like, no, kids don't just text. <laughs> Um, kids text their parents and parents will text the grandparents and believe me, adults will text and, and they just wouldn't buy into it. It was too, it was too early. Um, so that was really the start of creating the platform where people could text a word, which is now a catch word. But back then it was just, you text a keyword and that's essentially like ordering that piece of information and it would get sent to your email. You got a text saying, Hey, check your email. You get an email and an attachment and bam, you have it there so that you could read it later. You could forward it to friends. And, and by the way, we can measure whether you open that email. Um, so it was like a win across the board, but it, it took a long time for people to recognize that win, unfortunately. So how is it? Well, fortunately, now, but <laughs> <laughs> exactly. How is it different than a hashtag? Um, a, ha a hashtag is something you just tag somebody in on social. Well, we'll, well be right we'll be back. back. Anyway, um, we're not going to take a commercial yet, but we will have to coordinate. coordinate. Uh, um, this, so I'm going to be having, having to make fun of Emily while we do this because nobody oh, is on. Yes. <laughs> well, I can I can jump oh, in here and there. say that. Oh, you are there. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. Um, I can jump in and say that um, one of the things that, from a podcasting perspective, this is a very innovative creation because when you're guesting on other people's podcasts, it's very clunky sometimes to give out a link that's really long or lengthy or it's something that you, and if you want to drive traffic to the podcast listeners and have them come back and take action to get in touch with you, these catchwords work really well because it's something that can be good for the host of the podcast and for the uh, guest that's being interviewed on the podcast. So I'm a big fan of this uh, innovative process that these catchwords can do. Well, um, we're expecting our guests to be calling back soon, hopefully, 
And then when she does, uh, we'll be back on with her. In the meantime, Trace, um, so uh, interesting information that we're getting here. You know, the first thing I was thinking when she was talking was it almost sounded to me like a Twitter concept. That's why I was using the word hashtag, because it sounds to me like this was in the days when they were texting and going through that information. Um, and and that, that's what caught my eye, or my ear, I should say. And the, e, right. and the ear does begin with an E, but go ahead. Um, so. Well, and I think, too, it's, I mean, it's really focused on lead generation, which is with everybody who's creating so much content right now, and they have things like downloadable, you know, the five tips to how to grow your audience or all the, the different ways that people are providing content creation and using it for lead generation. This is a really easy and simple way for people to be able to download your content and then be basically get you into that funnel that everybody talks about and you get into the funnel and then they're able to email you and talk to you and ultimately convert you into sales. Mm -hmm. So I think that the lead generation aspect is really important. Well, I think Wanda did not wander off. She's back. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. <laughs> Oh my goodness! I don't know what happened. Oh, oh this is modern technology. Tra but we kept talking about catch words even while you were gone. We caught the net for you while you were gone. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. I have no idea where it where it. I dropped off. I kept well, on listen, telling my story, and you know. <laughs> well, listen, Tracy wanted to talk about you, and she said, "How can I get rid of her?" So that's what we did. But anyway. We're <laughs> Anyway, we are back. So the last word when I last left off was I was talking about what you, what catch is and what you were telling me seemed to appear to me to be like hashtag. And then you started explaining it and also talking about social media, and that's where we went gloop and you went. Off. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So so basically, when people follow you on on social media. Um, well, first of all, when you hashtag something, it's it's just essentially tagging something so that if people are finding that word then or that topic, then they'll they will also find your piece of content. So that's kind of how a hashtag works. Um, but in social media in general, sometimes, like let's say you're you're uh, speaking or you're even an interview, you're on an interview here, and you may say, "Hey guys, follow me on Facebook or Instagram," and you tell people to follow you. Right? The issue is that. Um, you don't really own that lead, right? You, the algorithm owns that lead. Sure, they may follow you and friend you, um, but when you're posting your content, such a small percentage of your content actually gets showed to those people. It's so frustrating. Um, but when somebody texts your catchword, they are 100% getting your content, and then now you have their email address, and you have a, a, a way to continue the conversation. So explain that to our Directly. users. Explain us to the users. How does how, how does somebody putting in a word in catch and saying I don't know supreme or something? How does that catch word get to somebody so that people that they, they can actually gather your information? When you have an account, you sign up and give out your information, and and, and by typing in that word, uh, they get your profile. Is that how it works? Yeah. So so for example, I actually put together um, this guide on how to transform your talk into a lead generating machine, okay? And I'll talk a little bit more as to why this guide is, is super important. So if any of your listeners are, are speakers, they're guests on podcasts, media, et cetera, um, they should really text to, to receive this guide. But it's, it's essentially um, some tips that I developed um, that enabled me to connect with. Every time I spoke in front of a live audience, I was able to connect with and get the email address of an average of 76% of that audience. Wow. And it wasn't just the technology. Yeah, an average of 76%. It wasn't just the tech. It was the, um, it was the strategy of how you use it, right? So if, if somebody wants to get that right now, all that they need to do is pull out their phone and text to the number 411321 if you're in the U.S., and you're going to text the word LEADS, L-E-A-D-S, to 411321. And the first time you text, we're going to ask for your email address. So please provide your email address instantly because that's how we get it to you. And then within seconds, you're going to get a confirmatory text saying, hey, check your email. And then you're, in your email, you're going to get an email with an attachment. Okay? So that's how you get the content. So you can text LEADS, L-E-A-D-S, to 411321 if you're in the U.S. Now, 
if you have listeners that are global, and especially when things are being recorded now and shared online, you are going to get global listeners. So we actually have our application available on WhatsApp as well. So if you're global and you're listening to this or outside of the U.S., you can go into WhatsApp. Our number is 1-909-741-1321. 1909-741-1321 and then you text the word leads in the message L E A D S. Once again, it's going to ask for your email address and then but um bump you're going to get a- Well, I like that but bump bump, but I didn't expect but bump. God. But that but bump was pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, Trace just to let you- <laughs> Trace just to let you know, I actually did exactly what she said, what Wanda said and I said uh I type in leads and it says almost there. Please reply with your personal email address to receive your request, powered by catchwords. Text help for help. Message and data rates may apply. Then I typed in my email. I got an email text message back. Thanks. Check your email box for four killer strategies that will transform your talk info into a lead generating machine. So. But don't bump bump. Well, but dump bump was. <laughs> We are going to be taking a break, and we'll be right back with KHDS 1220 and 98.1 FM, the S. Brian Radio Show. Welcome back. You're listening to KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM, the Ask Brian Radio Show. And before we went to break, we were talking with Wanda, and, uh, and we had a couple of things. So we were actually testing out this text messaging system for Catch. But, uh, you know, this is a very interesting platform that you created. Uh Obviously, you needed a lot of how, – how long did it take you to have the platform created once you came up with the concept? It, it took me around two years to go from, from concept, right, and knowing that I wanted to solve the, the problem of being eco-friendly um, because that was my focus at, at, at the time, and, um, and then also exploring what were all the potential solutions. And it was interesting because – because even back then, I was thinking, like, well, texting is kind of, like, basic and ar- ar- archaic and, 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 and such. But um, it was easy and for everybody to, to use. But clearly, when it went to the market, then people made me realize I was a little ahead of the game that, that not everybody um, – uh, was was texting. So it, it took us two years to finally, you know, deliver it to the market and to make it work. Um, we just added the WhatsApp uh, portion of it uh, this this year in 2022 because we realized as during COVID, as content was more digital, um, then there were global audiences that were listening to interviews or talks that that were incorporating catchwords. And so we figured we wanted to serve that audience too. But, but you know, we talked about the whole eco-friendly portion of it, but what's it, the transition to catchwords was because I would say around 2011 when I was running my consulting firm after I was sulking because, <laughs> because nobody liked my baby. Um, and um, I, I personally had spent several hundreds of thousands of dollars, like, working on on this you know but i i started my consulting firm in 2005 i was fortunate enough to to have that money but i was super inspired with how transformational this was going to be and so it was crushing <laughs> to have people say like it's too early and so i had to go back to my consulting stuff and i had been speaking but i had this one speaking engagement where i was competing well I was on stage with my competitors, which were PricewaterhouseCooper, Deloitte & Touche, KPMG, and, um, and I had to pay $10,000 to speak on that stage as a sponsor, quote, unquote, right? And I was like, what? I can't, I can't pay $10,000 to speak, but I knew that that audience was, would be around 300 people. It was chock full of my ideal client. And so I started sweating and I thought, wait a second, if I could actually identify who the people were that were, had the glisten in their eye, that were taking the pictures of my slides, that were writing those notes, if I could identify who those people were, then the $10,000 would be worth it. My product was $50,000 and up. So then I, un- I dusted off Ecofiles and I said, well, I wonder if I offer my audience my slides. Like, just text for my slides, right? Um, And that was the first time that I used it in front of an audience for a different purpose. So this is why I I like telling the story because sometimes you start in one direction and, you know, life circumstances just 
totally shoot you down, right? And I, 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 I had lost a lot of money building this technology. The industry was not yet ready um, for it, and I just kept my mind open. And this opportunity, I was like, ah, oh, what the heck? <laughs> it's, it's a very expensive toy. And 25% of my audience texted when I first used it to just offer my slides. And that was more leads. It was 75 leads. It was more leads than I had had in the past three times that I, I exhibited at that conference. Well, that's cool. And so that's when it was like, all right, this is something. That, that, that's pretty amazing. Uh, and it's amazing because your word is the same famous word that Tracy loves, and it's not an E, and it's called pivot. And I'm going to pivot to Tracy to continue yeah. these questioning. Yeah. <laughs> but she loves the word. How do you pivot your business? Well, there- <laughs> There's no doubt about it that if you're an entrepreneur and pivot isn't in your vocabulary, then I then I would just challenge anyone to say you're not a real entrepreneur. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? Because it's just, um, you know, I love so much about your story, especially about, you know, being an innovator is often a really common trait with and a visionary, common traits of being an entrepreneur. But that's the blessing and the curse because sometimes you can come to market too quickly and Mm -hmm. coming or you can be the first to market but not have it necessarily exactly right. Like no one really talks about Friendster, but they always talk about Facebook, right? And Mm -hmm. so um, I think that your ability to – and what I heard in your story was a couple of different pivots. One was that you knew when to draw the line of pushing a square peg into a round hole because of your financial investments and the reaction to the marketplace, I recently mm-hmm. saw an interview with Elon Musk who said, you've got to be grounded in reality. You've got to be an innovator and you've got to be grounded in reality and know when to, you know, I guess Kenny Rogers knows when to hold them and know when to fold them. And so you yeah. made a pivot there, but then you made a pivot back. So tell me a little bit about the emotional attachment around that experience. Ooh, a lot, a lot of emotions. I mean, to the point where um, when we were running our consulting firm and, well, when I was running my consulting firm and I started trying. Oh, well, we lost her again. Well, Tracy, we're going to be pivoting again. So um, this okay, is we'll a, pivot back to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is an interesting concept, though, while we wait her to call, call back. And, you know, um, as we said, you know, you have a business model A, and then something happens somewhere, and you decide, you know what, this could be bigger if I do something else, and that's pivoting, right? And as an entrepreneur, you do need to understand that not every time is going to work out perfectly, like our call, and you have to be able to pivot and go in a different direction. So it's actually very apropos to have this whole concept of, uh, of pivot here, and I think it's very important for any entrepreneur to be able to do that. Uh, yeah, I mean, if you can't pivot, then you can't survive and you can't thrive. There's just no doubt about that. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. So pick up right love where it, you love it. Off, we just, exactly. we just continued right on with the pivot conversation. <laughs> I, didn't, oh, yeah, I didn't know you were gone. Technology. I didn't even know she was gone. But, okay. but I, honestly, I, I, you know, I, I called it my, my baby earlier. It, it's, I mean, I part, put my heart and soul in it and, and, um, the fact that it was something that nobody else had delivered, it was completely new to the market, right? Um, it's, it's, it's harder because you're trying to hold onto an idea and a vision that people don't see yet, right? I saw it clearly. Even to this day, I see ecophiles clearly, right? I mean, what, we're, we're 13 years out, and we still don't have a replacement for paper brochures, my, my mission still is to deliver what I initially wanted to deliver, where, where it's to just get rid of that waste of paper when you're at a, a, an exhibit or a fair, to be able to just text for the pieces of information that you want. It's going to serve us as, as society, right? We don't want to have to carry around all that stuff, um, but you'll be able to connect with the experts that you actually intended to and just across the board. So I haven't I haven't dropped that vision, but wow, I didn't realize I was, I was that that far uh, ahead of the game. Um, 
so there was a lot of emotion. And so when we were doing, when I was running my consulting firm and I was using catch words for it, I was able to now go on presentations, ultimately get 76% of my audience texting, right? So earlier I said this guide that I share um, shows you how to turn your talk into a lead generating machine. It's because the tool was still the same, that 25% of my audience texting, but then I started playing around with how I deliver it, what do I say, how do I visually present it, when do I present it in my presentation, do I also put something on people's uh, a card, on people's chair, or on people's uh, desks, um, all of these things, and that's what allowed me to ultimately get to an average of 76%. I was able to analyze um, the conferences that I spoke at, pick the ones that had a really, really good response rate and continue to do so- the things that were really effective. And that helped build my consulting firm to $4.2 million in revenue, right? So talk about the emotional connection. I still felt like I was on a mission. And, and even though my, my own business grew, it, it wasn't satisfying enough for me to use this tool just for me, right? I, I, I was like... I found something way bigger. Every single presenter here should have a catchword. Every every TV interview, every information show should have a catchword. And so I, I became obsessed with with this vision. And so you know, fast forward, and I I, I meet my my husband, and we get married, and um and our my consulting firm is doing really really well. And um, I was trying to still kind of do something with Ecofiles back then on the side, and it wasn't working because my consulting firm was very analytical. My mind had to be like in one zone, but marketing strategy is very creative, and and they were clashing in my head, right? And I was being really ineffective, and then it it got to the point where my consulting firm work, um, I was getting angry. I was resentful of it because even though it was making money, it was squashing my ability to focus on the stream. And my husband and I had to have a conversation about, you know, leaving the comfort of this cash cow <laughs> um, to pursue this dream of making eco files and catch words something that, that was uh, the next gold standard. And um, we made the decision and we went through many, many, many years of financial struggle um, as we lost that, um, that comfort that we once had. And, um, but we still believed. So the, the emotional pivot was a big thing. And I'm so blessed to be able to have my husband have, believe in it, right? Because we both were very financially comfortable, very financially right. comfortable. Um, well, and and it, yeah, it was tough. And it also feels, yeah, and I mean, but that is amazing. And, you know, again, with entrepreneurship, you don't always have the blessing and the opportunity for those closest to you to be your biggest fans. And that's something I think that shocks a lot of entrepreneurs when they start businesses because they think that it's their friends and family that are going to be their biggest advocates and their biggest cheerleaders when Mm -hmm. they realize very, very quickly in a lot of cases that that's not the way it turns out. So that is, you know, really highlighting and showing um, that as a positive with you and your relationship because that is not always the way things turn out. Even when businesses are successful or ideas are timely, it's still, there's a, there's a certain fear and threat that entrepreneurship can bring into a relationship that doesn't always bode well. So that is a, a mm-hmm. huge accomplishment for both of you. Um, and yeah. also in terms of pivoting, I want to carry the, through on the conversation about the rebranding because it is no longer called Ecofiles. Tell me about the rebranding around Catch and how that was concepted and really the premise behind that and where that's, how that's been helpful to the new brand. Oh, well, I have an, a, a really off-the-wall story, so um, people may think it's, it, it's pretty kooky, but I want to establish the stage that my husband is an engineer, I have a doctorate in pharmacy, we're both super analytical scientific people, okay? So keep that in mind. I am a creative person, I perform in musical theater, all that stuff, but we are very much grounded in data and such, right? So um, 
I started, uh, oh gosh, it was probably maybe three, three or four years ago, I met this really interesting woman who is the world's first business Reiki master. Okay. She is amazing when it comes to um, energy management and tapping into your intuition, all of that stuff. So I went to onto one of her challenges and, and she taught us about um, this type of strategic meditation called shamanic journeying. It's it, and it has nothing to do with drugs. It, it, we use drumming to get us into this kind of like meditative trance and to really tap into our subconscious to, um, you see, I'm taking this in a totally different direction. I'm sure you didn't expect this, but you tap into your subconscious and it helped, uh, and she helped us u- utilize this tool for business, uh, business solving, uh, problem solving. And so I had been doing this, uh, this work for a year and a half, maybe by, by this point. And it was just amazing how it really tapped into my intuition. And scientifically, I understand the difference between your conscious and your subconscious mind. And you're essentially kind of getting rid of the static so you could tap into that. Now, people that shamanic journey, um, really well also tap into a higher level of energy that is beyond what's in our subconscious and they get downloads, quote unquote, right, from from the universe. Well, and I'm going to tell you, I know this sounds wackadoo, I'm a scientific person, but so my husband and I are struggling because we're like, Ecofiles does not work for this brand at all. Um, people that are speaking are not worried about being eco-friendly. Um, so what, what is the, the rebrand? We spent four days brainstorming. We went on road trips. We just couldn't think of it, couldn't think of it. And I said, you know what, honey, I'm going to go into a journey and see what comes up. And you're going go to have to wait. A- you're going to have to wait for that journey to end. We'll be right back. Come back. It was in KHS 1220 and 98.1 FM. Like no other station in the world. That's what they say on the ad. So we don't have a lot of time. We have about one minute before <laughs> we're going to go. So <laughs> I'm sorry. That's just the way it works. We have four minutes left, and we have to go over a couple things. How do you think you are doing? Are you think you're successful? And how do you define success? Wanda. Oh, me? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, me? Oh, me? I'm I'm successful because I feel um, aligned with with my intentions, and so in that way. But but every day I don't feel like I'm successful. I'm always really hard on myself, and my husband has to remind me. Um, but I, but I think it's important for us to to remember that if we're aligned, then we're successful. But more than monetary success, wh- how do you define success? Yeah, the, the alignment with your with your soul, your feeling of like your intention, your purpose, right? Um, and uh, ultimately, I I want success to be a, a feeling of peace, um, and not not feeling so stressed all the time. To be honest with you, there's been a lot a lot of stress and, and tension, and I feel like no matter what, I have to go through this journey and enjoy the journey, um, and not just strive for the end destination. Uh, earlier you had given us a, a, a number or a quote to go out and do this catching. So how can people get a lead and, and get into the program? Sure, sure. Well, I, I highly recommend this guide that I put together, um, how to transform your talk into a lead generating machine. So just text leads, L-E-A-D-S, to 411321. If you're outside of the U.S., use WhatsApp and text leads to 1909-741-1321. And you could also check out catchwords, K-E-T-C-H-W-O-R-D-S dot com, catchwords.com, which came to me in a journey. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're so excited that you joined us on the show and very excited about your, uh, the, the catch words is just an amazing gift to speakers, podcasters, people who are guesting on podcasts. And speaking of podcasts, um, you can get a podcast version of this show wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. It's the Ask Brian podcast. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, iHeartMedia, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, and we'd love it if you'd head on over, especially if you're an Apple user, head on over to Apple and leave us a review and uh, take a download and replay this awesome episode so that you can get your leads from Catch. <laughs> Woohoo! 
Well, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Wanda. Appreciate it. Um, uh, we'll probably want to have you back on. You're a very, very good guest, and there's a lot more information questions our users had. But thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I, it was a pleasure. And, and to anybody who is an expert and shares their expertise, I just say, show up, show up, show up. People need to hear you. And engagement is a very big, big thing for marketing. So that's why I wanted to even expand it further. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Wanda. Ask Brian Radio Show. Over and out. 1220.